welcome to Travels with John Stevenson here at uh, First Christ Church, Burlington, Kentucky, with Evan uh, Dallas in concert. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much. I would invite you all to stand as we begin our service uh, by singing Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. sung beautifully by Gary Greiser, the trio. Well, welcome to trio. I'm glad to see each and every one of you uh, here tonight. If this is your first time with us, I'm certainly glad that you've chosen to, to worship with us tonight, and I hope that you would uh, come back again and, and always, as always, bring somebody you know, bring a friend. As Gary would say, bring an enemy. It doesn't really matter. We're just glad to have everybody here uh, to worship God at trio. As far as announcements, uh, we still need more sound, light, and screen technicians. We've had a couple volunteers. Uh, Ken Swank Jr. has has run sound pretty successfully, I would say, yeah, good. in the last uh, in the last couple weeks. And uh, so we are always in need of more sound techs, light techs, etc. So uh, see me or Gary uh, after the service, and we'd be happy to to plug you in. Uh, just to remind you, choir starts on Thursday, November the 4th. We'll meet in this room at 6.30 p.m. on November the 4th. Uh, that is a Thursday. And uh, we'll start working on some Christmas stuff. And then we'll be singing here uh, that following Sunday, November the 7th. And we'll be singing uh, thereafter, barring any, any spikes in, in COVID. So 
Uh, if you're if you want to join choir, come on November the fourth. We'd be happy to have you. The legacy service will be on November the 9th, and the legacy service uh, is for those who have lost a loved one in the past year, and we honor the, the memory of that loved one. Uh, just bring in a picture uh, that night uh, of your loved one. It would probably be best to contact the office if you're planning on coming, if you haven't done that yet. Uh, just call the church and tell them that uh, you would like to participate in the legacy service. Uh, and then they'll have you bring in a picture of, of your loved one. It's a very nice event. Gary and I are both going to be uh, providing music for that. This is the, Gary has named this the Trio Brownie Shadow Box. And the Lucases, John and Betty Lucas, made this. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, but that's me with the piano. That's Bonnie with brownies, and that's Gary with a microphone. Yeah. Now you said they dance or something? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they got the live picture on there, but look, this is Bailey Moon. <laughs> I had no idea that Bonnie and, and Evan could move like that. <laughs> and Bonnie could do it, and not a single crumb <laughs> falls off the plate. The brownies are on the plate. But it's also, in the background is Christmas hymns, and the old Broadman hymnal is in the back. Oh yeah, uh, and so they've done a lot of thought to this, yeah. and uh, so we thought, well, we'll bring that out and we'll use it to promote our Christmas stuff. So Christmas choir practice starts yeah. on the fourth of November. So uh, come and join us, and, and we'll remind you with this, and we'll show you some. Of, can you show us some of those moves? Ah, uh, this is not appropriate. No, <laughs> maybe Bobby would. Oh no, Bobby. Oh, look there! They've got a close up. They have a close up. Of Brownies on the plate. Oh, now, that's okay. that's pretty good. The yeah, brownies are actually—I don't know if they're edible or not, but they're real. They look real. Well, that's all I've got here. All right, right, that's probably enough. That's probably enough. <laughs> Let me focus you on. Oh, by the way, Bengals won today. If you're not aware of that, it's, it was a good day to be a Bengals fan. Apparently, that's great. Uh, the prayer list. Uh, I, I updated the prayer list. To, this week, and there's several new people on there, and, uh, and I had so many people that I thought you might want to send cards to, uh, that I actually put a few addresses in the prayer list itself, so if you were looking to send a card to Lieutenant Hall from the police department, his address is in there on that line of his name, and I think Lois Beagle's name is also in there, in addition to the, where I've got cards of the week normally. So I will mention that on the cards of the week, we have Kevin and Ruth Ann Cahill. Both of them are, are on this list this week. Kevin is doing chemo and radiation, and Ruth Ann is dealing with some respiratory issues. And uh, I, would, I thought they could use some encouragement if you'd send them a card. Gene Tackett had a bad fall this week. Fell down the basement steps, cracked, or, you know, cracked the vertebrae in his neck, and is in the VA hospital and hoping to be able to, to move to rehab in uh, Boom Spring soon. Uh, Linda McClaskey lost her brother, Jim Miller. He's been on our prayer list for a long, long time, and he passed away uh, just a day or two ago. And then I just recently added Beverly Cadell to the list. She's in the hospital. She went into the hospital on Thursday uh, to the ER, and they kept her. And she had to miss Chris's uh, service, her son Chris, who died a long time ago, and they just were able to have his celebration of life service yesterday, and Bev had to miss it because she was not well enough to go. So there, there are cards for the week, and uh, there's a lot of information on the prayer list that I hope to pray for these folks, and, and, and uh, there's, there's several encouraging things on there, and I, I will tell you that Pam Apple is on the list, but Pam Apple is actually sitting on row four, and I asked her how she was when she came in, and she said, peachy keen. <laughs> so I'm going to change that. She needs a second hip replaced soon, not doing well at all. The peachy keen for her. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for hearing our prayers, and I thank you for uh, responding to them. Father, I thank you that uh, our folks are encouraged when they know that they're prayed for by the trio people. And so, Father, we bring all these people to you tonight. 
And we ask you to intervene in their lives and to, if it be your will, to heal them, to improve their lot in life, to give them peace and your grace and your love. Father, I pray that uh, you would be with uh, Darren tonight as he brings the message. Uh, I thank you that Evan has brought a friend to play some special music, and we look forward to hearing this beautiful music tonight. Thank you for this service, and thank you for each one that comes and faithfully supports this service, and thank you for the blessings that we come to receive each week. Help us to be useful to your kingdom in this week ahead. Put people in our paths that need a word of encouragement and help us to be faithful to give that word. Help us to live for Jesus. In his name I pray. Well, I've chosen a couple of hymns tonight that uh, I didn't know, but it's a couple of Gary's favorite uh, hymns, and uh, they are, they're both beautiful in, in word and tune, so let's join our voices as we uh, sing Living for Jesus.
Beautiful. That's my song. Well, I would like to introduce to you tonight a guest uh, that I've uh, invited to Trio to, to play for us. What can you can you tell us your name? Wendy, just Wendy. Wendy. Wendy Zen. Wendy Zen. Okay. Now, where are you from? I'm from China, and uh, I'm now uh, studying in uh, CCM, so College Conservatory of Music, um, University of Cincinnati. Now, I went and practiced with her the other night, and uh, I had been working on a song for probably about a month, and I brought it to her. It was the first time she's ever seen it, and she sits down and opens it and plays it perfectly. And I said, you make me sick. <laughs> <laughs> now, another thing that she's brought is she has, hold up your iPad. Oh, you want a new funny technology part of it? Yes, you, you know. Now, see all this music, how I always lose my music and it blows off my stand and all that stuff? Well, that, that's, that's the, uh, that is the cure. However, you have to have a pedal next to these pedals, and uh, I have a hard time you know, keeping up with both of my hands, so I can't, I, that's just too many pedals for me. I just can't. I, I, I can pedal for you. Uh, I can get a little bit tricky. But we, uh, we're, we're gonna play uh, three pieces for you tonight, and the first one is by uh, a composer named Johannes Brahms, and it's probably one of his most well-known pieces. Uh, it's called the Hungarian Dance Number no. Five. And she's playing the hard part.
you play on this one for this next piece, and I'm going to get play on the next one. Yes, absolutely, because I want to. <laughs> See, she's setting up her pedal besides the pedals. I see. ticket to come to church, right? <laughs> Pretty sure we got our money's worth there, so what? What on? Yeah. What a gift. You guys are amazing. That was incredible. Wait, if you, if you, every time you mention like how long it took to put something together, it's like obviously we're like, alright, what's next? There's no reason to wait, right? We got these prodigies here that just put something together, so uh, <laughs> so be careful whenever you mention, hey, we just uh, we just put this together. 
So, uh, man, what a gift, what a privilege to be able to be together. Uh, if you are a first-time guest, we're thrilled that you're here. And uh, we're entering into a brand new series called Core Values. And so uh, this is foundational to who we are specifically as a church. We really ask the question, what's the point? Like, you should be asking that question. We should be asking that question more often than we do regarding everything in life. Like, what's the point to what I'm doing, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm engaging in? And so we're going to talk about the values that permeate, that are foundational to uh, First Church specifically. But I'm going to frame this entire series around the question of, who am I becoming? Who am I becoming while I'm doing what I'm doing? We like to think that we can compartmentalize our lives. And today I'm going to do this. And today I'm going to hang out with this person and go this direction. We, we operate under the illusion of control, but we fail to ask the question, what do I do? who am I becoming in the midst of what I'm doing and who I'm doing it with. Every one of us, the reality is, is being discipled, meaning we're being formed into a certain kind of person by what and who we are allowing to influence us, by what we consume and who we are around. So you and your kids and your grandkids are being formed by what you choose to watch on TV, right? That Netflix show and that news station is contributing to the kind of person you're becoming. We don't like to think of it that way. Right? At the end of the day, we're tired, we're going to watch something, kind of mentally check out. But it's shaping our minds and our hearts. You're formed by how you engage in social media. You're formed by who you spend time with. And you're formed by the church you're connected to. I know some of you are part of a multiple church families, which is, which is great. Right, Sunday morning, you're all in there. Sunday night, you come, and this is just a beautiful community. Uh, but you have to understand, however it is that you spend your time, whatever you give your attention to, it's forming you into a certain kind of person. So the mission of the church is not merely to get people to come to church. We can do we can do a lot of attractional things, spend a lot of money, right, and you know, flashing lights, and we could have ten awesome pianists up here, and just you know that'd be the headline. We're like, hey, come and see. You know, God invites us to come and experience, come and engage, and and, and pay attention to the Spirit who is leading us. The mission of the church, according to Christ, is to make disciples. Is to make disciples. We can do a lot of good things in the church, but if we're failing to make disciples, we're failing at what God has called us to primarily. So the church is meant to be a primary influencer in the formation of a person. But unfortunately, church life sometimes gets reduced to, I merely like the church that I go to, meaning it's more of like a spectator sport because we become fans of a specific church. And even in the digital age, when we were doing church online, you can be connected to several churches just for the sake of consuming what it is that you like or what it is that you prefer. The consequence, don't miss, here's what's at stake. You miss out on the essence of formation that's meant to happen through relationship. That always requires both time and vulnerability. That's God's primary design for reaching the world. It's a church family moving forward on mission together. So our mission statement here at First Church is this. First Church exists to lead people to know, worship, and serve Jesus Christ. That's the reason for our existence. That's the point. So let's break that down. Number one, to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. If someone were to come and experience church at First Church for however long, and they walked away merely saying, I like the experience, but they didn't catch a glimpse of the Jesus who has come to pursue them and save them, We've got it wrong. Now, I'm not saying that you know, the, 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 the factor wasn't that they were closed off to that experience. That's always part of it. You've got to open yourself up to that. But it better be very, very clear what this church values more than anything else when someone walks out that door. Jesus. Jesus is the point of it all. He's our motivation. He's our hope. He's the reason why we can gather and experience uh, such joy-filled moments like we have here. So to know, worship, and serve Jesus Christ. Worship. Is living with a sense of awe toward God and walking with Him in every part of your life. It's not the church that you go to and you go to experience God on, on a specific Sunday and you go on your way. No, if I'm going to worship God, I am walking with a rhythm, a daily uh, routine that is paying attention to the work of God. Understanding that He is always with me. That's the essence of relationship. So that's worship. And then serve. It's living a life of, full, of, of surrender, fully available to be used by God. It flips the script on uh, what people want to know. What's the purpose of my life? Well, the purpose of my life, I never want to understand it's not my life. I better get busy understanding that I exist to empty my life for the sake of God's cause and purpose for my life. And so we show up every single day, God, what would you have for me today? How can I serve you, honor you with my life? 
Now, the easiest word to overlook in our mission statement is the word lead. See, to be a part of a church family is not to merely get something out of it, to be led. That's part of it. That's where it begins. But it's to take ownership of the mission. We're all in. We're participators in it. To experience transformation and then help other people do the same. Think about your own families. When you, uh, when you have a baby, and you know, we have a, a seven-month-old along with a three-and-a-half-old who sometimes still acts like a baby. But when you think about the essence of growing up, raising up a family, babies need help having all of their needs met, every single one. But over time, they begin to grow up. They crawl, walk, run, learn how to interact with other people, take responsibility for their actions, and ideally help other people in life as well. If they get stalled out, something went wrong, the natural progression is for them to grow up. Our kids grow up to be active participants in life and live with a sense of purpose beyond themselves. As opposed to being 30 or 40 years old, living in their parents' basement, having cereal for dinner every single night. Which, you know, some days that sounds like a good time. I like cereal for dinner. That's an easy way uh, to, to, to not have to take responsibility and, and do any growing up. So First Church existing to lead people to know, worship, and serve Christ means all of us are aiming to get to the point in our spiritual walk where we are helping others in their spiritual walk. And so, then again, there's so many examples of this, you know, Tria specifically and the prayer list, just the, uh, the posture of caring for another and being bothered by the fact that other people right, are in the valley. And understand it's our, our responsibility as church family to enter into people's lives and to, to help other people get through or to grow up. So the reality is this is an active mission of which we're meant to be participators in. Everyone here probably wants to grow when you believe the church can help you in that. And the church should. However, it's not the culmination of what God has in mind for you personally. The purpose of spiritual formation is not merely spiritual wellness, obtaining this deep sense of personal contentment and peace. Right In our day and age, this can be a blurry thing when you start to talk, talk about things like mindfulness. Like spirituality resonates with our culture at large. Uh, and in maybe ways like never before. But oftentimes you can get confused with the way of Jesus. He's not going to settle for mere uh, deep contentment and peace in your life where you come and you just feel better about yourself. So before we really get into the crux of this, I want to make sure we're all on the same page when it comes to what God is about, when it comes to forming us spiritually. Robert Mulholland wrote a book called Invitation to a Journey. And he wrote this back in the 90s, and I didn't read it until earlier this year. And as soon as I read it, uh, I was thrilled because it's probably the best book on spiritual formation I've ever read. Uh, but I was also upset that nobody introduced this book to me you know, back when I was in college. And so this is Robert Mulholland from An Invitation to a Journey. He defines spiritual formation this way. A process of being formed in the image of Christ, here it is, for the sake of others. He goes on, it says, much contemporary Christian spirituality tends to view the spiritual life as a static possession rather than a dynamic and ever-developing growth to 